Hello guys, my name is Andrew. 25 years old, I come from a small town called Mayaton. At the age of 16, I started excelling in sport. I started doing very well with rugby. I uh, was fortunate enough to play Craven Week and got signed to the Sharks where I played my junior rugby there for three, three and a half years. In 2014, I got signed back to Johannesburg and I played Curry Cup at the Falcons for another two seasons. 21 is where things started to change a little bit for me. I experimented with drugs while I was still playing rugby, got sick. Obviously my drug consumption had an effect on the way I train. Before I knew it, I got a heart condition. They didn't offer me a contract again. I was very frustrated with myself and I think that's what a lot of people experience that do take drugs and then find themselves being stuck in, in the mud a little bit because priorities, your, your perspective changes a bit on what's important in life and what's not important. So before I knew it, I was missing training, I was missing family events, I was just missing stuff that is supposed to be normal in, in life. I went from a, from a rugby player that was um, excelling in school, doing very well and uh, had a, a good career to, to dabbling with things that I knew I shouldn't have been dabbling with. Crime and underhanded dealings. About four years went past and I, and I had a look at my life. I, I came to a point where I sat down uh, uh, at, a, at a friend's house, if, if you want to call him that. I would go to this guy's house and I would lay low there for, for a week or two weeks at a time. And I was sitting there after a dramatic uh, a weekend where my girlfriend, which is my wife now at the time, kicked me out of the house because I was cheating on her. And this, this was a, a cycle that I, that I went through, losing family and losing and breaking relationships. I sat there and I had this overwhelming feeling of, which I now know was the Holy Spirit, but asking me, what, what are you doing with your life, Andrew? You've been in the same hamster wheel, the same cycle for the last four years. And instinctively, I, I knew it was I knew it was Jesus. I wouldn't admit it back then, but I knew it was Jesus speaking to my heart, busy drawing me in. My cousin's name is Chris and his wife's name is Therese. About 10 years ago, a dramatic change happened in his life. For months, maybe years before that even, Chris and Therese have always been in contact with me, trying to find out what's happening in my life, what I'm doing. They've also, uh, as the years went past, found out what I've been up to and also my drug addiction and this. So, the Lord was definitely using Chris and Therese to pull me in. And I remember actually being in contact with them that week before, came to their house to speak to them. I was sitting in that house and um, I said, well, enough's enough. And I was sitting uh, on this couch with only my gun next to me, an empty wallet and a broken cell phone. No place to go, no place to be. A penny dropped. I think that's when the Lord stepped in. I passed out from all the tranquilizers I took. Before I knew it, the next morning I heard a knock on the door and my mother and my sister were standing there. Came to, to fetch me and said, um, Andrew, we want you to come home. And that's what I did. I went home, got into contact with Chris and Therese. Praise the Lord, uh, I moved in with, with Chris and Therese the, the very next day. And that's how, how my journey started. I remember Chris and Therese telling me, it's, it's a clean break. You need to do a clean break if you, if you want to pursue this life. So in my mind, it was mauling the whole time. How am I going to break free from this life that I feel is my identity? That, that was my identity. So how was I going to just break away? And I, I was very skeptic about Jesus. And I didn't know the power of God, to be honest with you. I didn't know how deep his hand would, would go into a hole to put, pull someone out of it. And I experienced that firsthand. Um, without even understanding, I, I came to Chris and Therese, I chopped up my SIM card and I threw my phone away. I came in a, in a very broken state, in a total state of, I've got nothing left. And I can even remember the words like, Lord, if you are real, then let's see. Let's see what, what can happen. The very next day, I got a good night's rest, the first night in a while that I got a proper sleep. I started discipleship with Therese, doing just a simple prayer. Lord, I, I give myself to you. Jesus, um, come, and, come and show me who you are. So I basically, the little bit that I had left, a little bit of dignity, or like, I don't even know what you want to call it. I was a very broken man when I, when I came to Chris and Therese. I just gave that all to the Lord and I said, Lord, I'm a, I'm a canvas for you. I know you exist. I've seen you work through people in my life, but I never thought it was for me. Um, I had a very, just to add on, a very weird, warped perception of God. I thought he was this high and mighty figure in the clouds that 
chooses who he wants to love and doesn't want to love and punish and doesn't want to punish. And to my amazement, the gospel was preached to me for the first time. The love of Christ, not dependent on my works or what I do, but that I'm accepted as a son of God. He already sees me as perfect. The last thing in my, in my mind was uh, ever crossed was being a son of God. I think that's where a lot of people get this thing confused. God isn't expecting of you to, to do something. You don't have to become something before you come to Him. You don't have to wash yourself clean or start try living right before you step into the presence of God because He's holy. Yes, God is holy, but where Jesus comes into your life and He, he actually reveals your real identity to you. For someone that's never heard the gospel, that might seem like a very absurd idea, like I know who I am. This is why I am, accept me or don't accept me. I've heard those words too many times in my life. I think when I found out that, yes, Jesus died for me on a cross, back in the day I thought, well, that's nice. Thank you, I, you died for me on a cross, but I didn't know the depths of what Jesus actually came to do. Jesus came, took the punishment that was reserved for me. Without the Savior Jesus, we were all destined to receive punishment on Judgment Day because sin causes death. And Jesus said Andrew was supposed to, to hang on that cross, but because I love him so much, I'm going to come to earth, I'm going to put myself in a human form, I'm going to walk this life out so that I can relate with everything that people go through, but I'm going to do it faultlessly without sin so I can show them that this is actually what life is. I'm going to go and I'm going to take the punishment that was meant for Andrew and let me pay, pay the debt that Andrew is supposed to owe. And I think that shocked me to my core, that someone 2,000 years ago would take my punishment for the rotten things that I've done and say, it's fine, Andrew, I will take your punishment, I will die for you. And that's where the things change. That's where the real flip came for me. When I actually realized that, yes, on the one hand, Jesus took my punishment and put it on a cross, but even more, he didn't just come and, and take my punishment and then okay, cool, Andrew, you're forgiven now, but now I'm going to leave you to try and figure out what life is and go forward. He actually did much more than that. He came to reveal the lost identity of man. The devil actually pushing identities on people, forming them through situations in life. Without the Savior, you will never know who you actually are. And I remember a striking thing that I read in the Bible. It was 2 Corinthians 5.17. It said, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All the old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. That was a verse that really mauled in my mind. I was like, what does it mean to be a new creation? What, what, what does this mean being baptized? And, and I actually found out that being baptized is nailing that false identity onto that cross with Jesus. And coming out of that water, I'm, I'm standing pure and clean before God. He showed me who I actually was and He gave me my brand new nature, which was His nature. My life from that moment on changed. The first time I went back home, I started telling them what's been happening in my life and how the Lord's been speaking to me and revealing things to me. Some, some broken relationships actually were mended by the power of, of Jesus. Started getting along with my father, which was very difficult before. They realized that something was different about me. I then had the opportunity to, to pray for my mother. She had a, a constant pain in her ears and her sinus and headaches and stuff like that. And by the grace of God, in, in, in a few seconds, she was healed after me laying hands on her. And that, I think that's what really shocked me first, that you know, it wasn't about uh, the time length of being saved before you start seeing things happening. These signs will follow those that believe. So I just stepped into a space of believing wholeheartedly in, in what, what I was reading out of the Word of God that, you know, that believers will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I prayed for my father's legs. He's, he also got healed. I think through me getting saved, a whole family change happened. I, I found that my mother, my father, both my sisters, an extended family gave their lives to the Lord. After about two or three weeks of, of being away or disappeared after cutting up my SIM card and my phone, I prayed one night to the Lord and I said, Lord, I don't miss much of, of, of my previous life, but I do miss my girlfriend, which is now my wife. Please bring her back to me. Let her, let her walk this journey. Let her see the change in me, but also let the change take place in her. Let her, let her see the truth about life because the truth about life started being revealed to me. I started seeing things differently. My perspective definitely changed on, on life and I think that's the beauty of when you follow Jesus. You know, we, we're all stuck in a dark room until someone switches the light on and you don't know any better while you're in this dark room until, until that light comes on and you can see actually what's going on and that's definitely what happens when, when you accept Jesus. People are afraid to give their lives to the Lord because they're scared 
they can, must give up their little pleasures and all these type of things. But the truth about it is once Jesus comes and he shows you the truth about him and the truth about you, desires automatically start changing. Things that you used to like before are not that appealing to you. I think that's, that's what I'm most grateful for. Praise the Lord, a few days later, I gave her a phone call and I explained to what happened. She thought I was in jail or dead or in a rehab. She actually found out that I gave my life to Jesus and that I was in the, in the process of finding out who I really am now, a, a changed man. She came and she started her discipleship with Therese as well and uh, gave her life to the Lord. Got baptized, got filled with the Holy Spirit and we decided that we were going to do this journey together which I'm very fortunate to, to have a, a partner that has the same beliefs as me and has, has the same heart as me for people and for the gospel. So I, I thank the Lord every day for my wife. She was with me for about a month before the Lord pressed on my heart and started speaking through other people to, to make her my wife. And, and that's exactly what I did. I went down on my birthday on my knee and I asked her to marry me and she said yes. And that's where this journey of ours started. So a month and a half in being saved, I decided to, to step out and go see what this is all about. So once again, it's not about how long you've known Christ. I, I know stories of people that have accepted Jesus and an hour later were already seeing miracles flow through their hands. So it's definitely about how hungry you are as a person. How hungry are you to find out what the Word of God speaks over you and, and, and says who you are. To be honest with you, I didn't know more than four books in the, in the, in the Bible. I, know, I knew Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and maybe a little bit of Acts and then a scripture here and there. But that was enough for the Lord to, to, to use me. Me and my wife went to Botswana and in Botswana we were fortunate to preach to very hungry people and great signs followed. We were seeing great manifestations of the Spirit. We were seeing crazy healings happening on our first day that we got there. We also saw something that I didn't know much about but I felt very natural with it. Casting out of, of, of evil spirits out of people. I always had this, this view of, of movies that pastors get thrown around rooms when, when uh, they, they try and do an exorcism on people. But I soon realized that the Spirit of God inside of me is, is the all-powerful, the all-mighty Spirit of God lives inside of me as a, as, as a man walking on this earth. And I'm a vessel that, that carries the Spirit of God into the nations and that every knee will bow before, before Christ. All demonic spirits shake in their boots when they come into contact with God. And, uh, it's something that I, I really felt drawn to is, is praying for people that are demon afflicted and, and, and demons can't look into the eyes of, of the Lord, they, they run. On this trip we found ourselves casting demons out of people every day. Crazy miracles, blind eyes opening. A lady that has been lame her entire life, she had groove marks on the floor where she had to drag herself from her hut to, to the toilet. She hasn't been able to walk and she's at an astonishing age of 90 years old. I don't know people that get that age anymore. She was 90 years old and never walked in her life. Thought I was just going to preach to her a little bit and I, and I felt the Lord say to me, put your hands on her legs and pray. I put my hands on her legs and for some reason I didn't ask God to heal her. I commanded her to be healed. It's something that I learned as I went through this journey is that I don't bring a problem to God and ask Him to help me. I actually bring God to the problem. And that's actually a mindset that, that has been helping me a lot through stages where people need pr prayer for healing or deliverance and all of that. I, I bring God to the problem and God takes care of it right there. I laid hands on this lady, I commanded her legs to work, I commanded her back to be healed and took a step of faith without even knowing it. I was quite scared. Took a step of faith and told her to stand up. And I think that was the turning point for me with, with regards to what I believe the power of God is. She stood up and she walked. And that was a crazy moment for me. I came back from my mission trip, had the, the opportunity to go share with my family what has happened and told them about the deliverances and all of these type of things, which they were very skeptic about. They didn't know these things uh, existed. I felt the Lord press on my heart to pray for a family member. I asked him to stand up and I, I prayed for him. And as I laid hands on him, dropped to the ground and started manifesting a demon and within 10-15 minutes we cast this demon out and ever since he's been a God-fearing, God-loving man, he's in awe of what God has done in his life. So the change that happened in my family was definitely, I could give all glory to God using me to, to bring a change like that into my family. Me and my wife went through and got married about a week before we left for India. 
So for my honeymoon, I went to India to preach the gospel, which was another life-changing moment for me. Uh, the way God took a willing heart and a, and a vessel and, and, and put me in places that I never expected. From preaching to drug addicts on a corner, setting people free from demons, a lot of people got set free, a lot of healings, but most of all truth was being delivered to people. Above, above miracles and healings and all of that, I think people finding out their identity and who they are in Christ and what Christ actually did on the cross is, is the thing that is the most important. We go out into the nations to set the captives free and we set the captives free not by force or pulling, it's by actually just delivering truth to people. You know, I don't have to try and convince anyone of Jesus. The fact is that John 3 verse 16 says, for God so loved the world that he sent his only son. It means Jesus died for everyone. So it's not a case of me trying to convince you that, oh, he also died for you. And, and scripture says the very same thing. Instinctively inside of a man, they know God and they long to worship something. And you can see it throughout everything that happens in life. People often worship money, their jobs, all the different religions. Why is that? Every man has a longing to worship because God is the creator and he made all people. But it's not about convincing people. I have to actually show people what's inside of them already, how God actually created them and Jesus died for them. So. Yeah, that's, that's the way we preach the gospel today. We, don't, we preach a gospel of grace because it's grace that, set, that, that pulled me in. It's the goodness of God that leads a man to repentance. It wasn't brimstone and fire and going to hell for your sins that, that, that pulled me in. Yes, that is a part of the gospel, but Jesus came by truth and grace. If, if you knew, Andrew, who you were, you wouldn't be acting this type of way. With, with regards to my past, I wasn't trying to, to become something um, when I got saved, I actually just started to realize that I was never meant to be all of these things before, that I'm actually a son of God and showing me what's inside of me. And yes, when a mistake happens, there's grace for that mistake, but we repent and repent means to change the way you think. So if I was doing something before and now the grace of God gave me a chance to choose right from wrong, now I don't do that thing anymore. I choose right and I step away from it. I used to be a drug addict before. Now when confronted with a drug, I step away from it. I stay away from situations where these things are because the devil also knows what I used to like in my life before. So now he'll try to push that in front of you, but you can't push something in front of someone when they're not open to it. I started running for God and, and I've been running ever since. Slip ups happen, but that's not, that's not what it's about. The slip up is, says a righteous man, it says in the Bible will fall seven times, but the moral of the story is to realize that that's not who you are. A mistake doesn't define you. Because you slip up doesn't mean you're not a son of God anymore, that you, you less. It's, it's a learning process where you're being discipled and you, you're always on a state of learning when you're with Jesus. Every day, your perspective changes on life and things that used to be important, women, money, cars, are actually things that are not desirable anymore. Now, the fruits of the Spirit, without me knowing it, there's the things that I desire. Peace, self-control, discipline love, gentleness, all of these things are, are things that I've longed for actually my entire life. Even at my darkest days, all I would say is, I wish I wasn't so tormented or I want peace. I want just, I want to be loved right. And that's why I didn't love right because I never felt loved right. It's to do what I want with people. And Jesus came and he gave me that package, a full package. When I got out that water, I became a brand new creation that went from doing this to living for God and I dedicate and I give my life to the Lord just the way He gave His life to me. You don't need a mission field to do the Lord's work every single day of your life. You come into contact with people that are broken, that are confused, that haven't had the light switched on, that are still dwelling in the, in the dark room. And you carry the goodness, the Spirit of God inside of you. And it's not a spirit of you're wrong and you're wrong and this. It's let me tell you how much God actually loves you and what He did for you and what what he's willing to do for you. That's what leads a man to repentance. And that's what led me to repentance. And a lot of people changed, not because of me, but because of the love and the life that God put inside of me. It's all by the grace of God. It's got nothing to do with me as a man. I'm just the vessel that put up my hand that the Lord's been using. And, uh, and I pray for grace over my life to keep doing what I've, what I've been doing.